Let's try it again. Sorry about that. I don't know what was going on, but I went in, I closed down everything, and I accidentally closed down the Facebook page. So y'all come back on in here. I'll keep running my mouth a little bit. Maybe I'll start it over. Oh, well. Stuff happens. I had had um, TV going on my phone a while ago, and I may not have shut that off, but that shouldn't bleed through to this. Don't know why there was an issue, but I apologize for that, and we'll keep going. All gone. Thank you. Thanks for telling me. Take two. Yep. We'll get a couple of hundred people in here, and we'll start over. Don't know if I remember what I said, but hey, who knows? Uh, so I just got through listening to Leanne's webinar and as usual, we're on the same page. Yesterday, she um, she's had her webinar scheduled for weeks and we haven't talked very much except in text messages since I've been helping um, my nephew. And yesterday I discussed automatic pilot, our routines, how our routines change everything how our routines change things and when you're on automatic pilot you don't have to think you don't have to think at all and not thinking you know our brains can get in our way really uh, and it's just funny just funny you know how the good Lord and the Holy Spirit works to bring us all together because Scott Adams has talked about um, our habits being automatic. Uh, Leanne talks about it. I've been talking about it for 20 years, how being on automatic pilot can change your life. You know, the do it now principle and automatic pilot, letting go of our perfection, it all fits together in a nice little package that becomes who we are. And a lot of times the do it now principle kicks in and I don't even realize I've done things because it's automatic, automatic. So I want to talk about our 11 commandments and how important they are to us. And the first one is keep your sink clean and shiny. It's just that simple. Keep your sink clean and shiny. Wow. And that was my first habit. I started it in 1999. I've made that New Year's resolution to get organized. How many of you? Okay, I'll take, I'll take my scarf off. Lay it in my lap. How about that? Sometimes Leanne's hair rubs against her microphone, and I, I know what you're talking about. Um, so keeping your sink clean and shiny was my very first habit. And from that habit it evolved into the countertops got clear. This is my only habit was to keep that sink clean and shiny. The, the, the counters got cleared, the stove got clean, and I can't do anything about the sound being too low. I thought it was me. Okay, I don't know how to help that. Wrong button. Let me see if I can Sound button really doesn't have anything to do with input here. Okay, so keeping your sink clean and shiny, it has a snowball effect. It's the only habit and the only habit. And with that one habit, um, the rest of the kitchen got clean. The rest of the kitchen was wonderful. By the end of the month, I didn't mind getting in the kitchen cooking because everything was done and it was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And when your sink is clean and shiny, okay, now this is funny. The room would just hit the door. Did you know there was somebody the other day who called the police because their Roomba started in the middle of the night and it started hitting the wall <laughs> and they thought somebody was in their house. Oh, I loved it. It's so funny, just funny. You got to laugh sometimes. You just have to laugh. So another habit that I practiced was getting dressed to lace up shoes. It didn't happen all at once. I piggybacked one habit with another. 
and get getting dressed to those lace up shoes absolutely had me ready for the day. I've been doing it for 21 years now, 21 years. And I lay my clothes out the night before because I don't have any excuses to not get dressed in the morning because my clothes are laid out waiting for me. That way, if in the middle of the night, I have to get up and get dressed to take Ben to the ER, by golly, I'm dressed to lace up shoes. I don't sleep in my clothes, but they're right there waiting for me to jump back in them because I picked them out. I have a whole outfit laid out, ready to go. Uh, do your morning and before bed routine every day. It can be a simple three to five step routine. Part of my before bed routine, that's the most important routine of the day, is laying my clothes out. You can put them on a hanger and hang them up on a door. You can put them on your dresser. You can lay them on a chair just as long as you know right where they are. And when I'm at Ben's house, I have everything ready to go, packed up. My computer's packed up. Everything's ready to go if we have to leave in the middle of the night. If we have to leave in the middle of the night. So please do your before bed routine. It's important to your sanity the next day. It's, it's really important to your sanity. So have your before bed routine done. Get up in the morning, getting up in the morning and getting dressed to lace up shoes. <laughs> ben says, guess who's here? He's still in the hospital, y'all. Miss Laura's with him. So uh, getting dressed to lace up shoes is important, is important every day to be dressed to lace up shoes then you're ready you you know and if you're a guy you got to get up you got to get a shower you got to fix your face you know that means shaving for me it's put on my makeup i don't have on much but i got a little bit on and it's being ready being ready for anything say somebody calls you and wants to meet you for dinner or for lunch you're ready to go so here's another thing don't allow yourself to be sidetracked by your computer. Well, we need to add the phone to that one. I think I'll go in there and edit this after I, I get off of here. We get sidetracked by our phones. We get sidetracked by our computers. We get sidetracked by the television. So don't allow electronics to sidetrack you. Don't allow it. Electronics has to be, a, shall we say, a privilege and a reward. Uh, next one is number five, pick up after yourself. If you get something out, put it away. That's all it is. That keeps your house in order. You, you don't have, I mean, as, as sidetracked people, you, we can, people can follow us, our tracks through the house, just like they were tracking us through the woods. Because we get something out and we lay it down. We get something out and we lay it down. You can go and you can sit, do the same thing with children. But if you stop at the top of every hour and put things away, it takes two minutes. Put things away when you get it out. Use it. Stay focused on what you're doing with it. And then put it back where it belongs. Uh, now here's a big one. Don't try to do two projects at once. Yep, that's what we do a lot of times. Now, I like to listen to books and work. And, it, I, and, and But a lot of times I don't hear what's being said, so I have to listen to the book uh, two or three times to get the whole focus of the book. But that's okay. I like to listen to books. Uh, so don't do two projects at once. If you're going to fold clothes, fold clothes. Get them done as fast as you can. Fold the clothes. If you're going to do the dishes, go in the kitchen, put on some good music, and do the dishes. Okay, next thing. Number seven. Don't pull out more than you can put back in one hour. There is an organizational guru who tells you to pull everything out of your closet. Don't do that to yourself. 
Do not do that to yourself. I got an email one time from a lady. Yes, they're all printable. I got an email from a lady who, um, who pulled all her books off of her library shelves. Robert would die if I did that. He would literally say, where are my books? Because I would never be able to get them back into the order that he has them because they're in his order. He has a set of bookshelves and I have a set there. They connected, but, um, I don't mess with his books. He doesn't mess with mine. That's, I learned that early on. I decluttered one of his favorite cookie cookbooks and I had put the box in the car like I tell everybody to do, but I hadn't taken it to Goodwill yet. And I was able to rescue his blue cookie cookbook. As he's been making cookies from for years. And if he makes a cookie recipe and it's not any good, that's, he puts an X on it. So don't pull out more than you can put back in one hour. Don't do that. We can pull things out like a crazy person. Because you know why? It's our perfectionism. We want to see that empty closet. We want to see those empty shelves. But guess what? Putting it back and getting it organized is pretty tough. That's why we like to precisely pluck clutter off a shelf. If you, Nancy, if you want to use PayPal, contact orders at flylady.net. Orders at flylady.net and Kathy will help you. Kathy's on here right now. So don't pull out more than you can put back in one hour. We just need to gradually get rid of clutter because when you get rid of too much clutter at one time, you know what you want to do? You want to get it all back again. It's like you have been, um, it, it's, it's a bad thing. You want to collect it all back. So don't do that to yourself. Getting rid of a little at a time where you're not even realizing it's going away except for what's in your car. That's a great way to get rid of things. Um, do something for yourself every day. This is all about pampering, pampering yourself, pampering yourself and do something for yourself every day, maybe even every morning and every afternoon and every evening, three times a day is not going to hurt you to be kind to yourself and love yourself. A renting a dumpster is a real good idea. When we remodeled our house in 2000, that's what we did. We had to have a dumpster for all the materials they tore out, but Robert took that opportunity to clean out our basement and he got rid of things he had had for a very long time. Work as fast as you can to get the job done. You know, when we dilly dally around or shilly shally as Robert was trying to tell me last night, when we dilly dally around, we just, it drags, drags us down. Sometimes we need to see some sort of success in what we're doing. So do crisis decluttering if you need to. 15 minutes in your kitchen, 15 minutes in your living room, 15 minutes in your bathroom, and then rest for 15 minutes. And then you can start over if you want to. Next, Yeah, when you work as fast as you can to get a job done, then you got time to play. And that's all we really want to do is play, but all work and no play makes um, George a dull boy. Well, all play and no work makes a messy house. So we got to get our stuff done. We got to get our routines done so that our house is cleaning itself. I'll never forget and I've told this story many times, but it bears repeating. I did an interview with a lady, a reporter from Sacramento, the Sacramento Bee, and I, I mentioned automatic pilot, that my house cleans itself on automatic pilot, and she said to me, she said to me, well, that's a bold-faced lie, and you do not call 
this southern woman a liar. You just don't do it. And I said, well, let me explain myself a little bit. And she had a really messy desk, too, because I knew she had a messy desk. I said, I get up every morning, and as before my feet hit the floor, I'm making up my bed. I slide out of my bed. I go into the bathroom. I get dressed to lace up shoes. I fix my hair and face. I walk out of the door bathroom with a load of laundry. I put a load of laundry in. I go to the kitchen. I empty the dishwasher. I run the dish mop, uh, dust mop while the, the coffee is brewing. And I'm on automatic pilot. And she says, well, I've, I've been baking my bed for 35 years. I said, see, you understand. I'm not a bold-faced liar. So that's the biggest thing to get my dandruff up is somebody called me a liar. And uh, you have to work as fast as you can. Let your routines go lickety-split. Just do them. And if you can't remember them, then write them on a piece of paper, put them in a sheet protector, and hang them up on your bathroom mirror and check them off as you go. Getting these things done gives you the ability to get, for me, to get to work. For other people, it's to just sit back and use your phones and do whatever you need to do. Work as fast as you can. Okay. Smile. You know, smiling is important. Smiling, even if you don't feel like it, it's contagious. Make up your mind to be happy, and you will be. So when the corners of your mouth turn up, this tells your brain, it releases endorphins that tell your brain that you're happy. Whether you're happy or not, turning up your lips to create a smile tells your brain you're happy. And then those endorphins are released, And bam, sticky notes do work, Anne. And here's the most important of all of our habits, of our 11 commandments. Don't forget to laugh every day. We have to laugh. If we don't laugh, we lose part of ourselves. And part of pampering yourself is learning to laugh. Learning to laugh, finding things that make you laugh, finding funny things. These things will change your life because laughing releases endorphins. And these are our happy hormones. These are wonderful things that keep us going. So learning to laugh every day is just part of this whole system that has has been worked out for you and it's it's all biblical i mean i didn't set out for it to match with with the bible i didn't do that but the holy spirit works through me and it was amazing that how everything fits together you know the greatest commandment is to love your neighbor as yourself if you don't love yourself you can't love others So loving yourself is going to create a platform for you to be the best you can be for yourself and for others. So when you're run down, when you're exhausted, your brain can't function. But when you learn to understand what's going on with your body, if you're getting anxious, if you're, if you're feeling antsy, if, if, If you're in pain, learn to accept it and start watching some funny videos. Find some funny videos. Do a Google search for on YouTube for funny videos. You can do this. You can do this. Funny videos are going to change your life. And we got to laugh. We find out what your humor, 
humor is. Kathy loves slapstick humor. She just, I don't get it sometimes, but she loves it. And when I see a video that I know that she's going to like, I send it to her because it makes her laugh. I love to make things, make people laugh. That's how I know my speeches are good because I get the audience rolling in the aisles. Oh, Jeannie Robertson is, is, is amazing. I love her too. She's funny. So folks, find your, find your funny bone today. Spend some time looking for some funny videos, laughing out loud for real, not just in LOL, but laugh out loud. And let's start thinking about this new year. I don't want you, your routines to fall by the wayside. I want you to build them up and get everything ready to go so that you can hit January 1st. When your feet hit the ground, that bed gets made, you get dressed to lace up shoes. And before you know it, your house is clean. But in the process, we're gonna get rid of some clutter this year. And if you have any idea for our motto for 2020, I've been thinking of the word plenty because we all have plenty. So you be thinking about it. Send, send, in, um, send in your videos. I mean, send in your mottos. And uh, let's see what we can come up with for, with for a motto. I've just been playing around with it. There's, there's my songwriter, Amy. Love you. So folks, let's have some fun today. Let's laugh today. We need to laugh every day. Maybe that should be my focus for this next year is just laughter. Laughing, laughing, laughing. Flinging plenty in 2020. <laughs> That's a good one. That's a good one. Flinging plenty in 2020. I like it. Uh, we'll get some more in here. Anyway, I love you all. I will see you later. Maybe I'll do a tea time today. And y'all have a great day. Don't forget, we got water bottles are in and the cooler bags are in. And get your water bottles now because they are selling fast because we start delivering them. When we get back from Christmas, we've, we've, a bunch of our sales are going to be ending after the first of the year. The purple rag bogo, the silver rag bogo, the rubber scrub a bogo. These are all going away. And we have the 75% disc, $75 discount on the, um, on the complete cleaning package. So folks, this is going to, 2020 is going to be a great year. Twenty twenty is going to be a wonderful year, and we're going to focus on laughing and decluttering, and establishing our habits. And your home is going to be on autopilot. I love you all. I will talk to you later. Bye.